This video will teach you all about chemical and physical properties and changes. As you might expect, on the background of this PowerPoint presentation, these are all examples of chemical or physical changes. I don't know if you wanted to take a minute and take a look to see which ones you believe are which, and then see how you compare at the end of this video presentation. Pure substances, if you remember, are going to be elements or compounds, something that has a finite ratio. So for example, with water, right, that is H2O, there are always two hydrogens to one oxygen. And in a sample of copper, every single one of those atoms are going to be copper. So pure substances have unique sets of chemical and physical properties. Physical properties are properties that can be measured or observed without changing the identity or composition of a substance. The chemical makeup is not changing when these properties are observed. For example, something like color, odor, texture, taste, freezing point, melting point, density, mass, and hardness, these are all examples of physical properties. These are all things that we can observe without changing the identity or composition of the substance. Chemical properties, on the other hand, are properties that indicate how a substance reacts with other substances. These properties are only observed when the substance undergoes a chemical change. For example, if a sample of matter is considered flammable, combustible, burnable, or reacts with something, these are going to be considered chemical properties. For example, take a look at water. On the left-hand side, you have physical properties. On the right-hand side, you have chemical properties. You might want to pause this video to think of some physical properties and chemical properties of water before you continue. Okay, hopefully you had a minute to do that. Physical properties for water, here's some things that I thought about. For example, water is colorless, right? I can observe that without changing the chemical identity of water. It's odorless, right? If I smell it, I don't change the chemical composition of water. It's a liquid at room temperature, or water is tasteless, and has a freezing point of zero degrees Celsius, boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius, and it flows. All of these can be observed without changing the chemical identity or chemical composition of water. The chemical properties of water, on the other hand, you have to, again, embark on some change to the chemical composition. So for example, water reacts with baking soda. To say water reacts with acid, these are all examples of um, chemical changes or things that we are observing that changes the chemical composition of water. Does not react with oil. It is not flammable. Again, all examples of chemical properties of water. Physical changes are changes in appearance without changing the composition. So it has to be some sort of change. So for example, cutting something, breaking something, pulverizing. Pulverizing just means to break apart into really small pieces. Changes in state, such as melting, freezing, boiling, subliming, or sometimes called sublimation. I don't know if you've ever gotten carbon dioxide in the mail, maybe if you have Omaha steaks or something like that shipped to your home, um, carbon dioxide, solid carbon dioxide will sublime. It'll go directly from a solid to a gas. So any change of state is going to be a physical change because it's still the same substance. Chemical changes, which are also known as reactions, are going to be where one or more substances react to form new substances with different chemical and physical properties. For example, the beginning substance has to be different than the ending substance. So things like rusting, burning, corrosion, digestion, respiration, and decaying are all examples of chemical reactions or chemical changes. All chemical reactions can be written or described by a chemical equation. On the left-hand side, you will always have the reactants, and separating the um, reactants and products would be this arrow. This arrow is a yield sign, so we say reactants yield products. For example, this is the equation for rust. Iron and oxygen react together to form iron 3 oxide. Another way to write it is by using symbols, which is what you see below. Believe it or not, later on in the school year, you are going to learn how to do this. As you might expect, the first equation is a word equation because it's written in words. 
and the one below it is called the formula equation because it's written in formulas. But don't worry about learning how to write it right now. That'll come with time. Another important law that we talk about that governs chemical reactions or any phase changes is the law of conservation of mass. So the law of conservation of mass says in any chemical or physical change, matter cannot be created or destroyed. What this really means is that the mass of the reactants that you start with has to be the mass of the products that you end with. You can't lose mass and you can't gain mass out of nowhere. So for example, hydrogen and oxygen reacting together to produce water, if you start with 10 grams of hydrogen and 5 grams of oxygen, as you might expect, you need to end up with 15 grams on the other side. In class, we completed an exit ticket most likely, so you're going to want to get this from your teacher, especially if you were absent. Thank you so much for watching, and hope, I hope this helped you learn about chemical and physical properties and changes.